This lesson deals with Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits that have dependent sources. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3, starting on page 50. Superposition and proportionality still hold for dependent sources, because dependent sources don't remain in the column of independent sources. In other words, they're not on the left-hand side of the equation, as we've been showing previously, but they're on the right-hand side of the equation. Thevenin and Norton's theorems also hold because they're based on superposition. For these theorems, we now have to find the open circuit voltage or the short circuit current, including the effects of these dependent sources. Dependent source is not a resistance, it's just a voltage or current relationship. So the Thevenin and Norton resistance must now be found by applying a test voltage and finding the response current with all of the independent sources set equal to zero. In other words, leave the dependent sources in the analysis. We may not be able to use series and parallel reduction techniques when we have dependent sources. Let's take a look at an example. Here you got a voltage source V sub S, a sensing voltage V sub X, and then a voltage controlled voltage source that takes this voltage and multiplies it by mu. There's also resistance R0. I want to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for this circuit between terminals A and B. Let's first find the open circuit voltage, in other words V Thevenin. The first step is to remove the load. There actually wasn't one here, so we're just going to leave that an open circuit. And of course the current in an open circuit is zero. There's a second open circuit here, so there's no current there. If we sum the currents at this node, what's entering the node would have to equal what's leaving the node. Here I'm leaving with zero, I'm leaving with zero. I would have to have zero entering, or zero leaving. Let's figure out what the output voltage V Thevenin is. Let's go around the loop now. The rise in voltage is equal to the drop of zero times R zero, plus mu times V sub X. V Thevenin is equal to mu times V sub X. Now what's V sub X? Well, it's gonna be this node voltage of V sub S minus this node voltage of V Thevenin. I can substitute that back in for V sub X now. We have V Thevenin is equal to mu times the quantity V sub S minus V Thevenin. Let's put this on the other side of the equation. So it's gonna be a plus mu times V Thevenin, pull the V Thevenin out, got one times V Thevenin, and then mu times V Thevenin. And what's left over then is mu times V sub S. So v Thevenin is equal to mu divided by one plus mu times V sub S. Next, let's find R Thevenin. Set all of the independent sources equal to zero. That's gonna be shorting the voltage source V sub S, applying a test voltage, calculating a test current. We'd also apply a current and then measure the voltage. It might be easier to do voltage. Write down everything you can on the drawing. Because there's no current here, that means what's entering the node is I test. What's leaving the node is zero plus this current. That current has to be I test. So the rise in voltage is V test. The drop is I test times R zero plus mu times V sub X. We've got V test in terms of I test. I gotta get rid of this term right here and get it either in terms of I test or V test. But with the short circuit here, the plus terminal is where the minus is on V test, and the minus terminal is where the plus terminal is. The voltage V sub X is the voltage across this source with the opposite sign. Let's equal the minus V test. Substitute that back in over here. If V test is equal to R zero times I test plus mu times a minus V test. Put this on the other side of the equation. So I've got V test times one, and then V test times mu, and that's equal to R zero times I test. Let's divide by I test and then divide R0 by one plus mu. The Thevenin resistance is R0 over one plus mu. Let's put our Thevenin equivalent circuit together. So I've got V Thevenin and I've got R Thevenin. This is actually a model for a, what's called a buffer circuit in electronics, where the controlled source is an op amp with a very large gain. If that's the case, the value of V Thevenin is gonna be V sub S over a large number over one plus a large number. So it's gonna be approaching V sub S. The output resistance is gonna be R0 divided by one plus a large number, so it's gonna be approaching zero if mu approaches infinity. So in the original circuit, there was no current coming out of V sub S, but the voltage is transferred to the output as a perfect voltage source. It's a very handy circuit for interconnecting things without loading effects. Now we found the Thevenin resistance by applying a test voltage and finding a test current when all the independent sources equal to zero. But there was a comment after our proof of the Thevenin's theorem that talked about another technique, so let's take a look at that. I can also find R Thevenin by taking the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. In other words, the Thevenin voltage to the Norton current. Let's take that same circuit now and let's short the output. And that would be our short circuit current flowing from A to B. But with the short circuit here, that means that the voltage across here has to be across here with the opposite sign. That the rise in voltage equals the drops around the loop. This would have to be the opposite of this. That means that the current that's flowing in here is gonna be mu times V sub X divided by R zero. Now with the short circuit here, 
This is the plus terminal of V sub S, and this is the minus terminal of V sub S. So V sub X is equal to V sub S. And so the short circuit current is mu divided by R0 times V sub X equal to V sub S. Let's find the Thevenin resistance as the ratio of the Thevenin voltage to the Norton current. Thevenin voltage was mu over 1 plus mu times V sub S, and the short circuit current was equal to mu divided by R0 times V sub S. V sub S is cancel. The mu's cancel. The R0 comes up in the numerator, and we divide by 1 plus mu. We get exactly the same result we had with the test voltage measuring the test current with all the independent sources set equal to zero. And this is Thevenin and Norton's theorem with dependent sources.